what, why 42? And I'm like, well, 42, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's the answer to life, the meaning of life, the universe, everything. Um, you know, and we're, we're building a knowledge company. Of course, it's got to be 42. Hello, intelligent beings of this marvelous planet. Welcome to Learn From The Brands, our podcast for you from 42courses.com where we learn bite-sized wisdom from the world's best brands. Today, we have a nudge stock special with the founder of 42 Courses, Chris Rawlinson. So Chris, I mean, the question that I want cause, to ask, because when I heard it, it's like, it's a really, it's the reason that I came on board really. And I think it's important for other people to hear it. So why did you start 42 Courses? Where do you want to start? <laughs> so, the short version. Like, yeah, the short <laughs> version. The short version. Okay. So the short version is, um, I guess, uh, when I was born. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the short version is, I've, I've, I've sort of. It does go back a bit. I mean, I, I, I grew up very dyslexic, so um, I really struggled, sort of, with with traditional education. I loved school. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely adored it. But I didn't feel like uh, uh, I learned a lot. I felt like it was always a real slog and, and really hard to do. And so, um, uh, you know, later in life, I kind of, I, ne I never ended up going to university. I ended up doing a bunch of other things. So um, I, one of the things I ended up doing was I was working for Ogilvy, um, this big ad agency, and you obviously know that because we got the, the Ogilvy courses on our site as well. But um, when I was at Ogilvy, I kind of got this weird job to help develop a training program, um, even though I'd never done that before. And uh, so, I, you know, like any good creative person, I kind of made it up. Um, but I thought when I was making it up, um, it would be great if we could make this something that was more fun and more enjoyable. And, uh, and so it was called the Ogilvy Digital Marketing Academy. This was in kind of, I guess, like 2006, maybe 2007. Um, and uh, what was interesting, there were, there were a few things that were interesting. One, people really enjoyed it because I tried to make it very playful and everything was split up. We used storytelling a lot. All the stuff, I, I guess, that you learned from, from being in advertising about how to communicate to people. And the second thing which I thought was interesting was we had people from other agencies ask if they could get the course from Ogilvy, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and at the time, uh, around that time, the, there was a, an amazing talk that had just come out on TED, which was that famous Ken Robinson talk, the you know, do, skill, do schools kill creativity talk. And I remember watching that on repeat, <laughs> like for, for nights on end, uh, just thinking, oh, I really resonate with that. Like, uh, yes, like, you know, we are kind of, we kill creativity in our lives, and particularly when we're, when we're kids and school children is kind of beaten out of us um, and uh, I just thought it would just be so nice if there was a way to, to help share learning that people could find enjoyable and that it was it, to make it sort of accessible as well um, so there are a whole load of different things going on in my head but I guess the, the key things were interesting that it that, that people are willing to, to to pay to be taught by a brand and in my head I thought well there are probably two big holders of information in the world. There's academic institutions, which everyone kind of knows about, you know, why you have university education. And then there's, there's institutional knowledge that's held by, by companies. Um, but normally most companies are terrible teachers. So uh, they're terrible at, at, at getting that information out. And I thought if we could act as the kind of the storytellers, the teachers that, that were in between getting information from a company and putting that out so that other people could, could use it. That could be very interesting. So that was the brand thing. The second thing was probably more the playful thing, which, which was more related to the, to the Sir Ken Robinson stuff, this kind of leaving room for exploration, which is why I think you'll see that we have links in all the courses for further reading. Um, you know, they just allow you to go down a bit of a rabbit hole and, and, and expand your own mind. And I think, um, yeah, that if you want to learn anything in life, you know, if, if we've been brutally honest, anyone can learn anything nowadays thanks to the internet. You just go online and you Google it. The problem is that there's a kajillion different sites to go to and you don't know which ones are actually good and which ones aren't. Um, so we 
in the courses, we try and do a big aggregation job as well to try and find the best articles that we can then link out to. Because, you know, say, say for example, if I wanted to try and recreate that Sir Ken Robinson talk in a course, like it's never going to be as good as the original TED talk. So why not just link out to the TED talk? Um, yeah, it, it just offers people the shortcut. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of uh, maybe a little bit about why I started it. And then, um, yeah, and I, I just, my dream though is, is you know, I, it makes me sad when the more people don't, um, don't continue to do learning in their lives. I think, you know, when obviously we're in, in the UK, like we're still kind of in a weird sort of semi lockdown, but things are public. But I remember going into, um, going into into the tube or you'd go into uh, um, you know onto a bus and you'd see people just uh, playing video games on um, on their on their phone and I was always like oh it'd be so great if they were learning something new instead like something that could help them uh, you know be, be be a better version of themselves so um, my, my dream scenario is, you know, my, my vision of success is with the day I get onto a tube or a bus and I look and see someone playing a 42 courses course rather than, you know, maybe Angry Birds or something. Um, you know, when that'll happen or if that'll happen, who knows? Um, but, but, you know, even just a few of you that are here now, like, thank you so much for, for the support that, that you give us and, and for taking the time. Like, it, it literally means the world to us. Like, uh, Running, running a small business and choosing to do this by myself and you know I invested my my life savings mortgage my house to get this running so without your support literally it wouldn't be here and, uh, and there are definitely days where it's tough like uh, you know we've, we've consciously chosen not to to go in and get like big corporate funding because I just I think it'll destroy it really quickly um, and uh, so we're growing it organically, which which then means that sometimes there are some down days where you're like, oh, <laughs> what am I doing? But um, like the kind words and the support that we get is just overwhelming. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, and the, and the feedback is quite amazing, I have to say, because since I joined the company a month ago, I've been speaking to customers almost every single day, actually. And yeah, the enjoyment they get out of it and how they're putting it into their daily lives in their work day is, uh, yeah, it's inspiring actually and i just wanted to jump back to um okay so you spoke about the dyslexia so the designing for the neural di diversity let's say or the, the distracted mind like people on the tube etc this is a big part of how the design of the lessons came about isn't it right like the short the 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 variation of the question types do you want to speak a little bit about that yeah i mean it 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 wasn't it wasn't by accident all the stuff that we do on the website we we spent about probably two almost three years um just researching how people learn in an online environment um, and how to get ideas across um so for example some of the stuff that we realized was even if you have um yeah i i guess there are always exceptions to the rule but Generally speaking, if you want to have a video, um, you know, video learning is great, but people don't remember very much from videos um, because it's 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 mentally it's not strenuous. You know, it's like you can sit in front of a TV and you can watch hours worth of videos, and, and then you can go away the next day and you've kind of forgotten everything that you've just watched. Um, and the same is true when you're doing doing learning. So video learning on its own um, doesn't have a very high recall rate. Uh, so we we realized we did a bunch of experiments with what video lengths worked and it looks like around sort of two to three maximum five minutes is about how long you want a video clip to be when you're teaching. Um, we then also looked at text length. So again, uh, text is a bit mentally harder to, to do and um, it's a bit more strenuous. But again, no one wants to read War and Peace when uh, you know most <laughs> most things uh, don't need an essay in order to explain how they work. Um, so we try and make the text quite short. Like our target is about two hundred and fifty to three hundred words, and we also try and make it so that we're telling a story um, instead of just telling you facts. We don't get this right all the time, by the way. So <laughs> apologies. Um, but <laughs> some are easier to do than others, but we try and find stories where we can, and then we relate the point that we're trying to get across to the story, which really helps people with memory recall. 
um, because they might not initially remember the fact or the stat, but they'll probably remember the story, which will hopefully then trigger the main thing that we were trying to get across, if that makes sense. Um, we also realized that online, you need continual um, like feedback loops. Otherwise things, again, you kind of lose interest and you just stop. So at the end of every lesson, there's a question. I think this is one of the bits that we need to work on a bit more, but um, at the moment we've got a few different question types and the idea is not, not to, to try and make sure that you're right or wrong, because I think life isn't really about being right or wrong most of the times. It's somewhere in between, you know, it's the, the gray in between, it's not black and white. Um, so with the question types, there will often be sort of opinions which I, I think are probably our most successful question type in that you all probably would have seen them. You know, we ask you, I don't know, how would you get more people to drive electric cars? And then you write down what, what you would do. And then when you press enter, it shows you everyone else's answer in the world who's answered that question. You just have to select three that you find interesting. Um, the nice thing about that is it does a few different things. You know, it gets you to think, which is I think what most of learning is about, like get you to try it and think about it. Um, and then it also allows you to see solutions from other people's perspectives, which I think is really valuable. You know, we, we all have a lens in which we look at the world through and it's biased towards whatever, however we've been brought up. There is no real exactly right or wrong, but um, it's hard to know what you don't know. So I think um, being able to see what other people are saying is, is, has been super valuable, hopefully for, for you as learners, but I know it's it seems to help again with memory recall and enjoyment. Other questions we try and make a bit harder. And I think generally we're trying to make the courses a bit harder um, based on, on mostly feedback from people like yourselves. Um, so you'll see that with the newer courses that we've launched, there's more working templates. People were also saying like, you know, please give us more practical tools that we can use. So we try and add more models and templates in there and You'll see some of the questions just ask you, you know, can you fill out this briefing format or template or whatever? Um, and then we check those to see whether you've done it right or wrong. And if someone gets something wrong or we're a bit unsure whether they've got it right, we, we try and send within half an hour, we try and reply to someone to, to share feedback with them, which I think is another thing that's quite important. Like, you know, there's no point in running a fully automated course because then you don't, you're not ever, not ever going to really know whether anyone actually has understood it or not. Um, so it, it's, yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole load of things that go into like how the learning's done. We also found that, you know, so each lesson is a little 15, 10 minute, 15 bite sized piece of content. And the idea is that, you know, if someone can dip in, do a lesson and then, and then bugger off again. Um, in, in my head, I was thinking like, if you needed to go to the loo, could you sit down and do a lesson <laughs> and, then, and then go off again? So that was kind of my like time limit. Um, and then if, if you want to know one thing, whenever we're working with other thought leaders, the question we ask them when we're trying to look for the, for the content at the very beginning is we ask them, how would you describe this to a group of people at a dinner party? So if you had to describe uh, whatever the complicated thing is to a group of friends at a dinner party, you're already assuming that most of these people are probably not industry experts, so they won't know the concept. And so how are you gonna capture their attention? Because no one likes someone waffling on in a boring way at a, at a dinner party. So um, yeah, that, those are sort of some of the little things that we do anyway to make sure the learning's good. And like, yeah, it's, it's called a blended learning approach, I think. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah, fantastic. Helps. Amazing answer. Uh, and Chris, this is a really, really busy week because we've got Nudge Stock coming up uh, with Ogilvy Can't Change, wait. which we are the sponsors of for the second year running. Uh, we've got yes. the Behavioral Economics 2 course coming out, Applied Behavioral Science with Rory. Yeah. And you're getting married the next week, so it's quite a busy week for you. But uh, do you just want to speak about uh, why you're involved with Nudge Stock and also what, what's, what's your vision for the future of the company? And then, then we'll open it up to questions. Cool, okay. Um, yeah, so Nudge Stock, um, I mean, I've been going to Nudge Stock, I think, since it started. I was still at Ogilvy when they first launched it. Um, and the, the basic premise, for those who don't know, is 
Um, Rory Sutherland, who's the vice chairman of, of Ogilvy, super nice guy, um, really just fascinating, love him to bits. Anyway, he, um, he reads everything. Um, so you could ask Rory about anything in the world and he'll go, oh yeah, did you know? <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost infuriating. He's almost too smart. But um, with Rory, and he has such a great way of describing things. Anyway, Rory, um, uh, being in advertising, has sort of ended up studying a lot in, uh, about the field of behavioral science and behavioral economics. And um, so years ago, he started this, this sort of division that was called Ogilvy Labs originally, then it was Ogilvy Change, and I think now it's Ogilvy Consulting. But um, he, because he reads so much and because he meets so many interesting people, he wanted to organize an event uh, just to share knowledge with everyone else about all these, you know, from all these fun people that he just meets during the day uh, or during his, his week. And so what ended up happening was um, uh, he got together. The first festival was literally just a, a festival of, of his mates, I think. Um, and it was just to promote Ogilvy Consulting as a, as a thing. And then over the years, it's grown and grown and grown. And as, as the topic has too, it's become you know, a much more widely known and talked about field or topic or field of study, I don't know. Um, and then last year, they were going to do a, a normal event in, um, I think they normally do it in Brighton, uh, but they ended up doing this virtual event and they ended up having like 200 and something thousand people go to this, uh, this virtual event, which was just off the charts. And so this year they've taken it to another level and they've got, you know, pretty much all the godfathers of behavioral science are actually there going to be talking um, and it's totally free for everyone. And obviously, in order to make something free, you still need to pay people. So, um, I, you know, we, we, we make courses with them. So it's like the least we can do is, is sort of help support it. I just think it's such a it's still probably the most helpful topic I think I've ever learned in, in life. And for us, uh, this new course that we're launching, the feedback we got from the first course was it was really great learning the principles, but we'd like something that was a bit more applicable to, you know, that was a bit more actionable. How can we use this ourselves in our company? So the second one we were going to call behavioral science part de, um, you know, bigger, longer, harder, stronger, but um, instead we called it uh, uh, applied behavioral economics or beh applied behavioral science, um, which is a bit more boring, but whenever we try and come up with really wacky ways, names for course names, people don't buy them. <laughs> so, so uh, it's like, it, so, it sounds great to be creative, but you kind of got to be practical as well. Otherwise no one knows what you're trying to talk about. So um, applied behavioral science it is. Um, and yeah, it's, I, I've actually, the call before this was, was with Rory um, doing some more videos. We, we've got loads of videos of Rory in this one. It's so, so funny. I've even managed to get, and I just recorded it this morning, um, really cool guy from, uh, most of you would have heard of Cambridge Analytica. You know, they're quite quite famous for, um, you know, helping push through, I think, Trump's election and Brexit, you know, two widely popular things, not. Um, and uh, anyway, they uh, I got one of their chief behavioral analyst to talk about ethics in the course as well, um, which is really interesting. Uh, so yeah, you'll in the ethics section, there's actually a, um, a nice video from him talking about the sort of five things that you need to check uh, before you do anything. Um, it, it's interesting, actually, just on a side note, all the people that I've met from Cambridge Analytica are actually super liberal and really lovely. I think it's just really sad. Like my personal view is that they're just used as a as a scapegoat. Yeah, you know, I think anyone who's a marketer or works in advertising, you know, that that's kind of your job. You know, when you're hired by a client, is to make them successful. I think they were just it was unfortunate the projects that they were working on um, were, you know, things that were controversial and and they almost did too good a job of it. You know, just, um, anyway, but yeah. Okay, well, really, really wetting the appetite there for the for the next course, guys. <laughs> you're cool. It's time for your questions. What have you always wanted to ask, Chris? Sorry to interrupt. I thought you'd love to hear that the next podcast is with Simon Lancaster. He is a speechwriter extraordinaire. He's a YouTube and TED Talk star. He's charming, sometimes controversial, and one pretty cool customer. I had tons of fun speaking to Simon and I'm sure you're going to love it. 
And don't miss the end of this podcast when you can hear details on our Applied Behavioral Science new course launch promotion. Okay, back to Chris Rawlinson. Chris, thank you. First of all, uh, you know, I'm Zafar from India. So expressing gratitude for carving out such a nice, uh, you know, academy. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. So Thanks. I, you know, before asking a question, I would actually uh, tell you my story, my discovery story, so that you also, you know, uh, can understand how, you know, how to target or how to get more people signed up for your courses. Uh, I'm not an Ivy League guy, you know, not, not gone to big institutions and all. So it's all, you know, feet on street kind of, uh, you know, experience, you know, with basic, uh, you know, education and all. So I was actually looking for uh, being a marketer myself by a profession, sales and marketing guy. So I was actually looking for a behavioral science uh, kind of a course. I was looking, I was, I was browsing through uh, all the universities, but I couldn't find somebody offering me that. So the keywords I used is like the behavioral science and also then for it, of course, you know, popped up. Nobody referred me actually. I didn't even know that there's a, a kind of a academy called 42, you know, courses and all. So I, I went, uh, I've gone through a website and the website was so, you know, you guys have actually, whatever you're teaching, you have put it in your website. So I, there was no follow-up or no remarketing required. I went into the website. I signed up on the first go. Then I realized that I made a mistake because if I would have waited, I would have got some discount coupon, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know, that that's on a light, lighter note, but I, uh, let me tell you, I got bang for buck for whatever, uh, the fee I paid, I'm fully satisfied. And the gamifying experience is, is, is actually really top, top notch because you always feel that it's not only you're learning, but you're also competing worldwide. You have that leaderboards program on the right, right hand side. Then you see, okay, I am on 27th now. So I'll have to go on 25th or, you know, 26th. So it, it, it drives you to actually to, to, to learn more and then, you know, then go to the next level. So that's really good. So secondly, yeah. Sorry, what is this? Okay. So that, that was my discovery, you know, pattern. Uh, so my suggestion to you is, Chris, uh, if you have to reach, reach out to people, you have to go, don't go behind this Ivy League guys. Go, go, go to the people who are actually, you know, somewhat, uh, you know, um, building their careers up. You know, right, yeah. now, right now they are into middle management and all, and they are very, you know, look at their interest, you know, they are, are they looking for, you know, uh, a good content? Are they, you know, uh, listening to podcast listeners, basically, because these are the guys, street smart guys who want to learn from others experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, like. so we don't have uh, a big daddy writing checks. So we'll have to go and, you know, fend for ourselves. So you have to, you know, catch hold of street smart guys who all who want to really invest on themselves and grow in, grow up in life. So one more advantage, like the learnings which have applied from the course, especially your star course is behavioral science. Let me tell you, that's the star. That's, you know, that's kind of a Tom Hanks kind of a, you know, guy who can actually attract, uh, you know, people. To, it's, it's really awesome. And I'm very glad when Bren announced that, you know, and you also told that, you know, the part two is coming. I'm really looking forward for it. So I was working on a, on a very challenging project where I was finding a difficult to generate leads for, for my project. I work for a real estate company where in, uh, uh, in a city called Chennai, where there is huge, yeah, Chennai in India. Uh, so where there's a huge competition, the supply is really, really more, the demand is slightly less. So we, we were stuck up with it. I, I have time, right? So I'll take another two minutes, right? It's okay, right? So, <laughs> okay. Sorry. 
So it's a, it's I, a big build-up for the questions, Zafa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. So I just got excited. So yeah. It's so, okay. I'm right. Yeah. So uh, I was really finding it difficult to find a consumer for an inquiry, not even for a sale, to inquire for a three-bedroom product, which is a slightly bigger format. Then I used a, a hook, uh, which I learned from uh, the behavioral economics, wherein you use percentages. So what, what, we, what we have done is we have communicated in the market that 73% of, like this is post-pandemic, we said 73% of new home buyers prefer a three-bedroom unit now. So we use that hook and believe me, we generated leads, then the site visits and then, you know, the sales. So thank you. So that's one learning and implementation. So coming back to the question, uh, I just want to understand like, uh, uh, is there any uh, possibility of uh, doing uh, nut stock or, you know, kind of uh, in clubhouse basically? I not stock can not stock be in Clubhouse um, or do a not stock style thing in Clubhouse. Um, could do. I mean, it, it's it's obviously it's an Ogilvy event, um, but they. I mean, they the way that they're doing it is it's just all sort of on on YouTube or on. Um, I think it's a YouTube live live session the whole day, and then they've got chat on there, and I think there's also. There's, there is another way to watch it, I think, through Zoom or something. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, it's, I think because it's a because it's a visual thing, as though people will be presenting data using slides, it's quite hard to kind of probably put that onto, um, on, onto, onto that platform. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's definitely something I know Rory's talked about trying to do. Um, I when clubhouse came out i sent him he loves doing anything new so i sent rory a clubhouse link you know whatever it was the beginning of last year when it came out and um, and i know he went on and gave it a go but um i don't know why it's weird he doesn't he doesn't really seem to like it that much um i'm not 100 percent sure why but yeah i mean i think it's just uh, everyone to them to themselves but we did think about for ourselves it would be nice to do sort of clubhouse sessions i think the more that we can be open and the more accessible we can be as well, the, the better. So, um, yeah, I mean, but Bren, Bren's uh, looking after all the marketing stuff. So as we grow, um, we'll, we'll carry on doing things. I think from our side, we're limited by, by probably by, by scale at the moment in time. Um, so we, we just do which stuff we know is going to be really effective. I think, to be honest, for us, our most effective marketing tool is probably email um i think but zafa i mean i think i said it was in my first week was it chris that i said that we should do something in the autumn our own webinar with uh, some of yeah, the sort yeah. of leaders that we have in the courses so watch this space zafa okay <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll do a sort of we we did have this yeah i think that we should definitely do it i just don't know when like uh, <laughs> yeah we, we definitely want to do a kind of 42 courses nudge stock type thing where you have like Rory and then we, we we get some of the other amazing thought leaders like Mike Viking to come in as well and and do sort of I, the thing that I'm trying to think in my head is how can we make it so that it's not another kind of here's someone doing a talk here's someone doing a talk it'd be so nice if it was more interactive so I think um, whenever I've been to events where they're sort of almost smaller groups and you get to interact with each other those ones to me have way more value than sitting in front of a computer and listening to someone we will come up with the killer idea chris no problem don't worry cool. <laughs> okay another another question from the floor anyone okay i'll ask one if that's okay Go um, for it, Nina. <laughs> thank you so chris have you done all the courses yourself yes i have <laughs> um so before before we launch um all of the courses everyone goes through all the courses themselves um can we just I clarify think, the question sorry just clarify the question nina do you mean have you studied the courses all yourself i do mean that and i wanted I, to ask a follow-on question which is which is yeah. your favorite one i'm going to put you on the spot here chris which is your favorite course of all the ones you've taken oh super hard um the I mean, I think in my head that the answer is fairly easy. Like, I think the one which I'll always have the fondest spot for 
I think, and I, I don't know how when this will ever change, but it's because it was our first one is, is going to be behavioral economics. I think when, when we launched that course, it was so fortuitous that that was the first course that we launched because it informed the way that we built our company and still does. Um, one of, I, I don't know whether anyone else does this in Zaffer, it sounds like you might have done this as well, but when I have a problem that I can't fix, what I still do is I will still have that problem or that question in my head and then I'll flick through the course and just see whether the different principles could fix that problem. And quite often, say probably like eight or nine times out of 10, I'll find a solution, um, which is to me amazing. <laughs> Um, and I haven't really had that with anything else. So I think it's quite easy to do that as well. You just sort of flick through the lessons and you're like, okay, is it that? Because that's what, no, okay. The, the one which is probably my favorite at the moment is, is the most recent one that we did, the one on creative leadership. Um, I think we've possibly given it a really bad name. Um, and in that I don't, I think that creativity is a word still turns a lot of people off and i think that they they possibly think that it's going to be a course on how to how to lead a whole load of creative people which, which is a massive misnomer it, it's actually a course on how you can use creativity to better be a better leader in your own life whether you're leading a team meeting of, of five people or whether you're um you know le leading a company with a thousand people yeah i i strongly believe if you take that course you'll walk away with some incredible skills to to help you in your own life just feel a bit more in control and and, and help mentor others to be better versions of themselves um, which i guess is something that we're trying to do with 42 courses is like how can we make people better versions of themselves so that's probably why i have a, a bias towards it but you also said in, in an internal meeting the other day, you said uh, that the behavioral economics too, or applied behavioral science is the best writing that you've seen so far. Is that right? Yeah, I think, I think like every time we make a course, um, so because we're a relatively small team, particularly with the writing, it's primarily done by Jake, who's my, my best friend. Um, he, he helped me launch the company and we've been best friends since we were seven years old. Um, yeah, we went to school together and, and you know, it, it, he, I love him to bits. Um, so, and Jake is definitely not dyslexic. He's the opposite of me. You know, he like, did amazingly well at school, amazingly well at university. I can um, confirm and, they are the yin and yang in personality also. <laughs> yeah, yeah um i'm i'm massively probably overly optimistic about everything jake takes things with slightly more uh, rational approach um and uh, probably realistic to be honest um <laughs> but um yeah it, it, with with the writing on this one it, it's i think we've got it really good it kind of feels um it feels much more playful i think that the stories are really good we've managed to find some really great stories um, I think that's the bit that normally takes us the longest. Um, and I think lengthwise, question wise, it's it's really good. I mean, we're 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 doing final run throughs like today and tomorrow. Um, and then we'll, we'll we'll launch it for testing. So some of you will probably get an email uh, on Wednesday, I would say, to to get early access to that course if you're if you're on our like special VIP list. <laughs> like, just, just in case you were worried, it's not just 42 courses. So like Dan Bennett at, uh, at Ogilvy, like checks everything and approves everything yeah. and does amends yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and others at, at Ogilvy, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the way, the way that we try and make these courses is we act as the teachers, but we still get all of the knowledge from the thought leaders themselves. So we'll have these like calls at the beginning where we try and get the structure of how the course is going to look, you know, what key chapters do we need to have? And then under that, we'll start putting down, okay, well, if we needed to discuss or if we needed to explain this key co topic, what lessons or what stories would we tell in order to describe it? And then we get all of those stories kind of just mind dumped down normally in a really messy way from lots of different thought leaders and practitioners. And then we go away 
and spend weeks going through it all and then doing our own research and then editing all the stuff that's been mind dumped down into something that is legible and makes sense and you can understand and doesn't take you five million years to to read um so yeah i guess like our job is to try and take do all the hard work for you so that when it comes to reading a lesson it's like okay well i got that, that was that was that was easy to understand <laughs> and that was interesting um, so nina yeah. did that answer your question the behavioral economics yes it did thank you very much i'm looking forward to the new course i will watch out for my email yeah yeah i'm sure it'll, i'm sure it'll, you'll, you'll almost certainly get one on wednesday <laughs> okay tom you got a question uh, i don't really have a question but just say thank you very much really because uh fortitude courses got me through the sanity that was the third lockdown at the beginning of the year <laughs> So, you know, to come back to the, the question earlier on when I got on, I was like, are you doing any learning at the moment? No, because I literally don't have any time. But during the beginning of the year in the third lockdown, it, uh, it gave me a lot of sanity and, and I haven't done any learning since I left college. So I think the, it's exactly, it, it, it's the, the, the layout and the structure of it for me mm. has been extremely helpful. Um, and it gets you thinking which is which is brilliant and I, I've, I've really enjoyed it and, and as soon as I can find time again I've made a note of the nudge stock thing on Friday as well uh, and I'm very much looking forward to the the, the, the new behavioral because that was the one that I did the first one that I did I think actually it was after the can yeah. lions sample that got me oh what's this um yeah. so yeah thank you yeah and no, I ho hope you enjoy it and the, with nudge stock the good thing um that you'll be happy to hear is because I mean it, it it's a real marathon it starts from 8 30 and it finishes at 8 30 I think um they they do record the whole thing is recorded so as soon as it on because it's on YouTube you can join at any time and yeah. click across so um yeah don't don't panic if you can't watch something live I've got an osteopath at nine o'clock for half an hour, but I'll be on before and after. <laughs> yeah, we we're gonna we're gonna probably like take it in turns to like spend the whole day just just going through it. But um, yeah, it's it's I I mean when whenever nudge stocks on, like I I like it just as much as anyone else. I mean, we're just sort of an audience member, um, so yeah, it's uh, it's good fun. But anyway, yeah, thanks so much, Tom. I really appreciate it. So, so Tom, Zafra's marketing for real estate. Nina is an author. You've got a very serious whiteboard behind you there. Are you, are you in data? No, video production. Wow. Oh, wow. Video production. Yeah. I just shared a link to a, a video producer a friend of mine the other day on LinkedIn, which says what people think video is. And it was, uh, I think it was record video, edit video, publish. And what it yeah, is in reality. I, I, I saw someone share that on LinkedIn. Yeah, it was like three points like that. And then they yeah. were like, no, it's actually that. Yeah. 800 no, points, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's yes. good fun. I enjoy, I enjoy what we do. And actually, the last course is completely aside from creativity because your creative leadership probably is the last course that I did, that I completed. But I really enjoyed that. And that, that gave me some helpful structures and talking points, actually, with, with the other freelancers that we work with. Um, oh, nice. So yeah, it was it was very helpful. I was speaking brilliant. to I was speaking to uh, I speak to lots of people every day. As I said, the customers around the world it's incredible. I was speaking to someone in Auckland this morning, Jakarta as well. And on Friday, uh, I had people in Singapore, Australia, all around, flying all around the world. And one guy I spoke to in Denmark, um, he's in data privacy. Great guy, Tim, and um, he's using the behavioral economics nudges. You know, you, people might think that the courses are for marketing and advertising people, but he's using all these nudges for his clients. And he says they're like, absolutely, you know, just work wonders. So it's really, I think it, the behavioral economics is just absolute gold dust. You can apply it yeah. anywhere and everywhere. Right, Zafa? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Chris, I have one suggestion on, uh, on the links, actually. So the links in the course, uh, few links are actually uh, subscribed uh, links. So what happens is most of the times we'll, we'll not be able to read it because we'll have to subscribe. So is there any, if it is legal, I don't know, if, if there is any possibility of copying that and, yeah. you know, pasting it in, in some other format? So, so in, in um, 
with any of the with it you'll find that uh, so on behavioral science and on on a couple of the the courses that we launched like a while ago um what we do is we we've, we've actually gone through and we've created pdf copies of the original articles so where there is stuff behind a paywall you'll see that uh, that it'll say in brackets pdf version and then you click that and it'll show you the the pdf version so we have fixed that but there are occasionally ones that we miss and then some are all that, that that weren't behind a paywall and then suddenly are so whenever anyone notices them or when we do a run through like we do a run through each course each quarter um just to try and like make sure that nothing's like being proven false or you know that the links are up to date and and you know if there's a way to improve it we will um so we do manage to catch uh, i would say probably 95 plus percent of them but there are always ones that slip through so yeah if you ever find any of those just let me know but with all the new courses whenever there's anything like that we put a pdf version on them so we we subscribe to like everything like i think we've got like a new york times account we've got a half business year account like so whenever uh, whenever we find a really handy article that is behind a paywall we'll, we'll we'll normally take a screenshot of it in a pdf it's an interesting one i i think um yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I see so many other e-learning courses do it. So I, I, mean, I think as long as you're not taking the piss with it, like, um, <laughs> and no one's uh, no one's going to be too upset. But yeah, um, it's always something we want to be careful with. So Chris, I I have two questions. Uh, the the one is which was advertised in the email is why why can't UK win the Eurovision? <laughs> um. I love the way you put that question down. I didn't even put that question down. Like, <laughs> okay. Do you love Eurovision Song Contest as much as I do? No, you love Eurovision Song Contest way more than I do, but it is hilarious. I love it. I love the Netflix film that was about it as well. The, the obviously totally yeah. fictional one from, um, is it Will Farrell? Yeah. I think I agree with Rory Sutherland. I think that the reason why we never do, why we never win particularly why we didn't do anything with this one was because it just was not interesting or creative enough. I think that also people really don't like Brexit. <laughs> so, Actually, we, we weren't alone this year in zero points. So four, Germany, four other countries got zero from the public. Yeah. yeah. I've also I, done really badly for many years before Brexit. Yes. Yeah, true. Yes. <laughs> true. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it does boggle my mind. Like in the UK, we've got so many world famous musicians. I think our music industry is kind of you know, massive compared to you know, many other countries in the world. And somehow, like, we don't manage to. Anyway, I think like Eurovision. Bill, Bill Bailey's right? offered to do it next year, hasn't he? I think. Yeah. Bill yes. Is, uh, yeah. I'm so for people. that. Yeah. He'd, he'd so. smash it. It's like the nicest guy in the world. Plus, he'd do something wacky and, and zany. Um, yeah, I'd love love to see Bill Bailey behind that. I think um, the reason we don't win the Eurovision Song Contest, or one of the reasons, is we, we can't quite admit that we want to. I think we like complaining <laughs> that, that we don't win the Eurovision. I think we, we don't purposely quite... sabotage ourselves. <laughs> I think we um I think we we like to think we're a bit above it, um and yeah, well, I don't think we we kind of see it as a particularly credible kind of a platform, and uh, we prefer moaning about not winning. Then actually take, taking the piss out of every other country as well with Graham Norton's yeah. amazing commentary. So, so Chris, just back because this this was a question of mine when I was uh, a customer back in the day, is because when I first heard about the company from Rory in a podcast, and I thought, what is forty two courses? What does that mean? Why is it called that? So. <laughs> Tell everybody the big reveal. I'm sure everyone already knows, but yeah, it was the the the, the way the name came about. In the and I'll really keep this short because then uh, we can all go and have supper. Um, the uh, the 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 way the name came about was I had so many amazing names for this company, and all of the URLs were taken of every single name that I came up with. And uh, so I was in um, Cape Town with. Uh, with some friends and we were sitting by in a lovely beach bar 
and I was saying, oh, I just, I don't know what to do. Like we, I can't seem to find a name that isn't already taken. And uh, a friend of mine said, oh, what about using a number name? Because number name URLs aren't taken too much at the moment. And then we were talking about it and we go, well, if it's a number name, there's only, there's only one number you can use, right? And it's, it's gotta be 42. And uh, it's, it's like, what, why 42? And I, well, 42, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's the answer to life, the meaning of life, the universe, everything. Um, you know, and we're, we're building a knowledge company. Of course, it's got to be 42. So uh, that's, that's where the name comes from. But like probably 90% of our customers must assume that we do 42 courses. Um, and so I think we will play into that name. I think when we get to 42 courses, we're going to stop there. And what we'll do is we'll just swap out courses on a year by year basis based on what are the key things you need to know as a human in today's world to be successful for tomorrow. And so that's why if you look at the stuff that we teach right now, it's like it's essentially kind of creativity, problem solving, lateral thinking, probably mindfulness and well-being. Those are the things that I believe, regardless of where you are in the world, what job you're doing, they are things that will help you to be a better version of yourself and they will help other people around you too. And, uh, and also they're fun topics that we just love to teach anyway. So um, selfishly that works too. But uh, if we, we look at the way that we look at the courses sometimes that might be interesting or not is uh, the World Economic Forum. They come up with a, you know, a list of the top five or top 10 skills that will be needed in the next five or 10 years. And we look at those lists a lot just to sense check them with the kind of courses that we're looking on, uh, looking at building. Um, and if it fits with that, we do them. And if it doesn't, then we, we probably won't make the course. But um, yeah, so that was a long way about what, how the name came about. <laughs> Perfect answer. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Zafa. Thank you, Nina. We will let you get back to your evenings. Have a lovely evening. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Hopefully, thank see you, you so Nudge, much. hopefully see you at Nudge.com Friday. Yeah. Loads of love, Nina. Thanks, Zafa. Thank Cheers, you. Man. Cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs> He's not acting. He is that positive. Thank you, Chris, and thank you to some of our 42 courses students, Zaffa, Nina, and Tom, asking questions there. It's Nudge Stock, Friday the 11th of June, the biggest conference on behavioral science around the world. It's free to attend. Go to nudgestock.co.uk to reserve your place now. And you heard Chris talking about our latest course, Applied Behavioral Science with Rory Sutherland. Think of this as a part two to our first course with Rory called Behavioral Economics. Both of these courses are accredited by Ogilvy and on completion come with sexy certificates also from Ogilvy and signed by Rory. In the Applied Behavioral Science course, you'll learn from practitioners from around the world, including other intelligent peeps from Ogilvy Change, who will give you practical tips and frameworks to give you the confidence to start applying the magic of behavioral science in your business. Are you lucky in life? If not, your lucky life has just begun because as a celebration of Nudgestock and our new course, we have a launch promotion for you. Use the code NUDGESTOCK2021 when you check out and you will receive preferential pricing for Applied Behavioral Science. This promotion ends this weekend on Sunday the 13th of June at midnight GMT, so do not miss out you behavioral science fans, nerds and others. Oh, and just, just one more thing. That same promotion code NUDGESTOCK2021 also works for a yearly subscription for unlimited access to everything on 42courses.com to truly enhance your mind and make your smile go wide. Until next time.